Having just moved into a brand new home and trying to unpack, I thought it would be a great time to kind of upcycle some items that I already have, including an old dresser, an old lamp, and even transform a bed. So as I go into each room since we've moved in here, I want to set up the bed frames, but I'd really like to convert them to something different. They've been black a long time. I've had them on the deck. I've had them in my living room and the day bed acts as a kind of like a couch for me. So I really wanted to change up its look and the first color that I picked, which was the Chateau Grey chalk paint, I ended up changing it. Painting metal is actually going to look pretty awful your first coat because it's a very slick surface. You, I didn't with the chalk paint, I didn't do any real prep work other than cleaning the bed with dish soap just to remove any grease that would be on it. But painting it up by the time I got to the second coat, it really came together. And this is a great way to really design out a room because a bed is a huge precedence in a room. So changing up from a black to a nice light linen color is really going to make a nice bright effect. I waited for each coat to dry and when I went back it would fill in all the spots that were missed. Again because the metal is very slick but the chalk paint sticks to it really well and the finish turned out fantastic. It's nice and flat, matte and it looks like new. So this idea actually got me thinking for another DIY idea. As I waited for the frame of the bed to dry, I decided to go in on this old lamp and paint the lamp shade itself. So I moistened my brush with French linen that I was already using for the day bed, and now I'm gonna paint the lamp shade. Just need a little tiny bit of paint and a bit of water. I love using those spray bottles. And go ahead and moisten the fabric of the lamp shade and use a little tiny bit of paint and just rub it in. And all you're gonna be doing is dyeing the fabric of the lamp shade. Again, this is a great way to make a dramatic effect on home decor. If your lampshades are great and you just really want to revitalize them, go ahead and use the chalk paints to dye the fabric and you can actually change up the look dramatically. Anytime I do this type of dyeing of color using a paint, it sometimes can take up to two full days until the fabric is completely dry. And then if you want, you can also add a little bit of a clear wax to seal that. For the base of the lamp, I'm going to keep going with the French linen as my base. But what I'd ideally like to do actually is create a patina effect to the base of this lamp because there's so much beautiful detail. As I waited for the bed frames to dry, I was looking at those chairs thinking how can I change those? I love the way they looked in my previous home, but for here I'm also thinking I can change something with those as well. So I applied two full coats of French linen to the base of the lamp and I'm going to let that dry. Then I can return back to this bed. It did actually take me a full day to get all three coats on that bed, but it was great to actually have a couple of side projects to work on as I waited for those coats to dry. So I'm going to add a little bit of this Lewis blue. It's a very light, almost a pale baby blue color. And I'm also going to apply a little bit of that green chalk paint. It's like a Chateau gray color. And by adding it, I'm almost just going to do a little bit of a, a dry brush. So I want my bristles to hit all the high points of this lamp base. And what I want to do is create a patina look using these two colors and the French linen as my base. When I add this kind of color accent, you're going to do this very, very lightly, almost like a feathering of a tiny, tiny amount of paint. So I like to actually have a towel on hand so that way I can actually make sure that there's only a very small amount 
remaining on the tips of the bristles. And I'm just going to stroke any of the high points with both that blue and gray green color. This kind of color combination is giving a kind of a verdigris look, something that you would see in a French garden. And I love the look because it's got a reflectiveness to it. So you've got these highlights and lowlights with both the green and the blue. If you are trying out this type of painting style, never worry. If you feel like you've added a little too much, you can always just go back and lightly feather the base color back on just to bring it back a bit. Now what I want to do is I'm going to actually just use the white wax to help seal it and also give it some additional highlights. Once I've done that, I'm going to see if maybe I might even add in another low light to it. And again, it's just going to help give it more definition. If you're wanting to use white as an accent color, sometimes the white wax is a great alternative and you're also sealing your chalk paint at the same time. I'm really loving the effects and how this is coming together. And once I get all the sides done, I think I am gonna go ahead and add in just a few more low lights to the low points of all of that detail. So just with a little artist brush, I'm going to use a tiny, tiny bit of the brown chalk paint, the En Fleur, and I'm just gonna go around to all the low points inside the carvings of this lamp base, and just kind of lightly, again, just a little bit of a dry brushing into these low points, and it's gonna give it kind of that really worn, weathered look. It will also create almost like a shadowing effect to the patina that I've created with the other colors. I might even add a few accent dots of the colors I used on the base to the lamp shade, just so that way it's more kind of cohesive together once everything is completely dry. Or if you had some small stencils, you could also stencil your lamp shade. So now that the bed is completely dry, I think I am going to go and attack those chairs. And I think it's just the chair legs. I couldn't actually take them off. I don't know why. Usually they will actually unscrew, but these ones didn't. So I guess they were nailed in. So I'm going to put in a little bit of painter's tape and I'm going to highlight the legs of these chairs with that French linen. And I think this is just going to kind of brighten them up. So a really, really easy way with any of your home furnishings, if you just want to make some subtle changes, sometimes just changing the legs into a different color will give a dramatic effect. Small changes making a big difference. I had sold a lot of my furnishings before we had moved and even to the people who bought our previous home. So I've been kind of out on the hunt looking for the right pieces for my home. And I came across this on the Facebook marketplace and I picked it up for $75. So I'm thinking I'd like to use this William Morris decoupage paper. And I have the link in the description box below where I got that. I'm gonna be using a little bit of I'm going to go with the blues and a little bit of green, but I'm going to start with the foundation. So for the prep work, I just use the dish soap to clean the entire piece, remove the hardware, and I'm going to start with a nice base with just the French linen and the Greek blue chalk paint. So I'm going to be doing a lot of blending. And when I blend, really, I'm just playing around with the paint. You just keep blending around until you like it. And it's actually a lot of fun and it's very relaxing to just coming up with the color hues and the tones, highlights and lowlights the way you see it. So chalk paint is extremely forgiving and it's a lot of fun to work with. I absolutely love this Greek blue. It is just so yummy. But just to soften it out a little bit, I like to blend it in a little bit with the French linen. And this is just kind of giving it a little bit of a, kind of a smoked out effect and just kind of color toning it down a little bit. So I will literally just grab with the same brush a little bit of both colors and just keep blending with it. 
I can work quite quickly, but if you like to work a little bit slower, absolutely not a problem. If you find your paint is drying quickly on you because your environment might be a little bit warmer, just add a little bit of water as you're blending and that will help the paint come together very seamlessly. When I take on these kind of furniture projects, I really keep in mind about just having fun. This was a MDF particle board styled piece of furniture, but I did like the look of it. So I just thought by adding some color as well as some depth and dimension with the decoupage, we could really dress this up. So I like to have some cling wrap as well as some Mod Podge for the decoupage. And I like to be quite liberal with the Mod Podge when I'm putting the decoupage on. Now, because these drawer fronts are kind of curved, I'm gonna start with the center of the decoupage and I'm just gonna rub it back with that cling wrap. And this is also gonna help remove any wrinkles and air bubbles. This is a very thin paper, so you will see a lot of creases as soon as it hits the Mod Podge and starts to kind of suction towards the drawer. Don't be alarmed. When you use the cling wrap, it will really help smooth all of that out. By rubbing it with the cling wrap as well, it's also going to prevent you from tearing at the very thin decoupage paper. I'm gonna go and finish all three drawers. I'm gonna cut back any of the decoupage paper that I'm not using for the drawer fronts, finish smoothing them out with the cling wrap. I will also make holes for the hardware. And then I will cut back everything and I'm gonna use a sanding block to cut out the edges around the drawer fronts and that's gonna make the decoupage nice and seamless for each drawer. If you have a sanding disc, that will work as well. You just need a fine grit sanding paper and you just need to lightly, lightly touch it and it's just gonna shed right at the 45 degree angle where the paper needs to come off the drawer and give it a nice seamless line. This is a great way to make a statement piece for a piece of furniture in a room by adding in some colors and some highlights as well as some depth and dimension with, even with the decoupage. This piece of furniture had a lot of dings and knocks into it, so this is really going to camouflage that out. Now that I have the decoupage all dried and ready to go, I wanna add a little bit more depth and character just with the chalk paint colors. So I started with a base of the Greek blue and blended in a little bit of the French linen just to a kind of give it a little bit of a softer blue tone. Now what I wanna do is use that Chateau Gray as well as I think I'm even gonna use a little bit of En Fleur for some highlights and low lights onto this piece. Kind of giving it that old old world finish, making it a timeless classic that it's had age and history. So I normally like to have a couple of paint brushes on hand. I love the flat chippy brushes and I will just dip my paint in very, very small amounts and just go around and randomly apply it. When I first started painting onto furniture pieces like this, I had to learn that as I was going, that when the paint is wet and when the paint is dry, it's gonna look very, very different. So I love to just play around and really blend my colors by almost stabbing the colors into each other. That's what's giving it the kind of the highlights and lowlights. But as I'm going around and doing it, some of the paint is still quite moist. So it's actually really good just to give yourself a little bit of a break, work in small sections, and give it a few extra minutes to dry and then come back as you're doing your blending. Because as I say, when it's wet, it's going to look a little bit different when it's dry. But most of all, have fun and be brave with it. And don't think that you can't blend something because absolutely you can. It's just playing with it and just having some fun. I basically take the Chateau Grey and 
then I take in a little bit of the on fleur using that as kind of the highlight and low light of colors pretty much just go around and dab it in where I want then what I will do is take my original Greek blue color and go around with a very small amount and just to keep dabbing it until the colors become more blended the way I want them. But again, I work in small sections and then once the paint's dry, I can see where I want to go back and add a little bit more of any color. And it's fun and you'd be surprised what beautiful blended colors you can create with this. The one thing I really wanted to do was kind of make it cohesive with the decoupage of the drawers around the frame of the actual dresser. So I'd add in all of the colors in just small little areas across the decoupage. But this is not a rushed project. Definitely take your time and again, work in those small sections. And I like to leave the low lights in areas that would naturally kind of age over time so it would just appear a little bit darker and that's generally will be into the lower base into the low points of any of the carved details as well as where the handles will be and i'll show you that in just a minute the big corrective thing i do when i'm blending any paints is i always go back and use my base color if i feel i've added too much so you're basically just kind of stabbing the paints into each other until you like its shadows and you like the color effect that's come. If you don't and you feel like you've added too much, just go and grab that brush with your base color and add that in to help kind of add as an eraser to what you did. The paint colors will always look stronger and almost less blended when they're wet. So sometimes we feel a little discouraged when we start blending and the paints aren't dry yet. So definitely want to give it, you know, a good half an hour to an hour in the small sections and then come back to it and you'd be surprised what a beautiful blend job you've actually done. But one thing I really favor about the old world finish is it's not meant to be perfect. The furniture was already imperfect and I just want to add some color, some depth, and a little bit of pattern and character to it. So that's what makes this type of painting a lot of fun. Never feel rushed when you're doing a paint of an old world technique like this. Have fun with it. See where you want your highlights and your low lights to go. Place your piece so that way you have good direct sunlight and you can see exactly where the colors are hitting and how the actual natural light is hitting the piece. So once I was done everything for this piece, I just used clear wax to seal everything, but you can actually use Mod Podge to seal your chalk paint as well, and that will help protect your paint finish. You could also just grab a roller and you could use a varnish, a clear varnish or a polyurethane, and that too will also protect your chalk paint finish. But you still will have that beautiful matte chalk look once everything is sealed. I definitely spent quite a few hours at playing where I wanted those highlights and lowlights with this piece. And again, I added in a little bit here, a little bit there, but there was no set pattern of what I was doing. I was just kind of going with the mood and how I saw it. And every time I had an area I didn't like, I would just go back to that base color. I used a little bit of some white speckles of a white chalk paint in around some of the corners and edges and it just gives it that old aged character. I was super delighted how the lamp turned out. And again, I used the white wax to seal it and added a few of the colors into the lampshade itself, just by a few dots.
I was really happy with these simple, easy DIYs that I did to change out the chair legs, paint up the day bed, as well as transform the lamp, and even create a whole new dresser look. So it was really impactful with just using the things that I already had without having to go out and buy a lot, and it's been very impactful and a lot less expensive. I also have a fun announcement I'd like to share with you. A lot to do, Hadley. He's not unpacking. So much stuff still to do, but that's okay. It's not coming together. <laughs> One room at a time, right, Hat? Do you want to go out? Is that what you want to do? You want to go out? I'm really excited to share that I'm going to be working with the redesign by Prima and we have an amazing workshop coming to Temecula, California with not only the creator but color expert Annie Salone herself and one of my favorite furniture artists and dear friend Kasha and we've created a workshop that we're going to have a lot of fun of hands-on experience and techniques and it's going to be so much fun and tickets are available on the Redesign by Prima website. If you think you could make it, we would love to see you. Thank you so much for joining me in this week's video and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, take care.